Hi, Rob. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Hi there. I think she's already, no, she's already gone. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Hi, Shelly. So. Hi, Shelly. Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, um, so I'm having an echo. I'm having an echo. Why am I having an echo? Test. Is it still happening? Oh, it's gone. Thank goodness. Okay. So how are all of you? Doing okay? Doing okay? Oh, uh, me, uh, me. me, that's me. Making it, making it. Oh, um, um, yeah, yeah. Carol, try try pushing your mic down closer to your mouth. Is, do you, is, is there a mic thing? There you go. Does that help? Does that help? Does that help? No. 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 <laughs> um. Um. But what? Oh, so it's not. It's not me. It is okay. Hmm. Uh, did that help? Yes. Great. I'm not sure what I did, but I think <laughs> I think I am hearing you through my computer and not through my earphones, which is maybe okay. Although I can hear better the other way, but we'll. Can you hear me now? Oh, not as well. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't hear, and I can't hear. And I, well, I think it's working. Let me try once more. Huh. Uh, did that do anything? Muted. Did that do anything? Did that do anything? Now that is that right there. Can you hear me? Yes, that's good. Can you hear us? Yeah, not through the computer, but I don't know. Whatever. Let's meet. I'll worry about it later. Ah, uh, okay. So we, um, I sent version six through email. So um, should we just share screen and go through it that way? Is that the best, the easiest way? I want to just review the modifications for the funding, the two funding bullets, and then to dig into education and public engagement more today. So hopefully, hopefully get to a point where we can present the third goal and strategies at the next meeting, if you have an August meeting. So um, I don't know, Greg, if you either want to let me share or if you want to pull the document up. Or I'm kind of a, a little frazzled today, just getting settled. Um, if you have it, can you share it? I mean, I think you should be able to share, or is it letting you? Or... Yeah, let me see. Getting into our email remotely from... You see that? Are you able to see the document? Not yet. You don't see it. Yes, we, see. We, we can see it. You could zoom in a little more if, if possible. I, mean, I, I can see the words, but they're they're smallish. Yep, is that better? That can go bigger. Yes. Okay, so with funding, we just in for 2B, just modified it by saying um, a minimum 15% recommended transfer, and then with the option to request additional funds as needed. Does that feel like it sufficiently addresses the conversation? Yeah. Yeah. And then D, 
Uh, I just want to ask about the language and whether we need a bullet with or a, um, um, parentheses with some suggestion, some possibilities. But this I idea of you know this is not a measurable strategy, so it's it's a, it's a little bit um, you know it's a little bit more general. But there was definitely conversation around an interest in exploring some creative ways to potentially fund the trust. So. It simply is research creative ways to develop additional funding sources for the trust. And then example of a few different things that were discussed, but I, I don't know if this feels okay, or if we leave off the parentheses, I think that it just can help other people kind of have a sense of what that might mean. But what do you think? It parallels um, the last bullet in in, in the first section where it says Similar. do something creative and here's examples. Yep, it's ex, ex, explore ways to strengthen the development ecosystem in Amherst with innovative or new programs and policies. It's a similar kind of thing, just a different, yeah. um, but, but, it, but it is true. It's then two different strategies where it's um, your trust has an interest in really exploring and learning and, and trying, potentially trying different things. Yeah, which is okay. It's just more loose and potentially a lot bigger. What's bigger? It's just the way that the strategies are written where it's so it's more general. It's at research and kind of education and maybe doing something, but it's, it's not as uh, measurable or as specific as a lot of the other strategies. I'm just putting it out there because it, it can, like how you measure success in those strategies is more difficult too, because it's not as, it's not so specific. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got it. I think that's, as long as not all the strategies are unmeasurable, I think that's okay. If one of four or whatever it is in each thing is a little bit uh, loose and amorphous, I that's okay with me. Well, the reality is that we don't know how you're going to raise $4 million. Exactly. <laughs> so something has to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Either for, yeah, exactly. But would you change, would you modify the language? Well, I guess the one question that I've, I've got is, you know, if I'm being fantastical, but with a with, with a just a dash of, uh, of 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 the possible <laughs> kind of scattered scattered in, you know, I wonder if the way we would get to four million via some creative strategy, I wonder if that would mean having to think of leveraging funds and getting funds involved in housing, but not necessarily routing them directly through the trust and but maybe we just sort of if if, if that opportunity presents itself maybe we just did agree to adjust it later i think is probably the way to do it actually well i think that the way that the is that it's not necessarily that it's just so that now i'm getting feedback um in the trust account necessarily, but it's supporting the work of the trust. So to your point, Greg, I don't think it necessarily says it has to necessarily come into the account, but where you're helping to secure funds to support your goals, which is to add how many units of affordable housing, you know, 200, 200 homes. So should we keep it like this for the full board to, to look at next time? If if it would help Greg's point, it could say for trust goals instead of for the trust. That's and a, then it wouldn't matter whose account it was in as long as it was doing what we wanted it to do. So are you saying in the next five, so secure $4 million over the next five years to support the goals of the trust versus the work of the trust? No, I was looking at D. I was just saying in D, research, da, 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 funding sources for trust goals. So if some of those sources don't put money exactly into the trust, I don't care as long as it does what it's supposed to do. 
gets us where we helped us get where we're supposed to going. So funding sources to meet trust goals instead of for the trust, but to meet trust goals. Or just yeah. Like, I don't that know. Makes sense to I me. don't know. <clears throat> Something like that. Yeah. To support trust goals. Okay. Okay, great. So education and public engagement. So develop a minimum of three outreach efforts a year to educate the community about local housing needs and build support for more affordable housing to further the goals of the trust. Um, I think I'm just gonna push this all on, down onto one page just to make it easier. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. The yellow is the one I added just based on the conversation that we we're having, but let's start at the beginning. 3A, hold an annual internal forum among municipal boards to keep members abreast of local housing needs and build a partnership between boards. Should we kind of go through all of them and then dig in individually, or do you want to just stop right now and consider that one? I don't know how you break. Let's do them one at a time. I'll remember by the time I get to the end. I won't remember the first one anyway. <laughs> um, so does and I like the only thing about that is that I don't care. We might not be the hold. It sounds like we're definitely who's like initiating it and it might be that we participate with some of those other boards in initiating it so hmm. i don't know i don't know how you change that but that exactly but that sounds a little bit more us focused than to me it quite might need to be Would there be a scenario where you simply respond to it and though participate in it, but not be a part of organizing it at all? Or is that unlikely? Hold or participate in, maybe. I mean, so if it's got to happen and if, if somebody else doesn't do it for us to participate in, then we should hold it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So it's like, it should happen, but if, I don't know. Or maybe I'm being maybe too picky. I think it's understood that if go ahead, Rob. Um, it's understood. At least I would understand that 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 this forum should happen, and it's up to us to make sure that it happens if someone else hasn't already done it. So I think it's fine to just say all. Oh. Yeah, I I would agree with that, Rob. And I, I also my, my question is actually more in the term forum. And for, do we really mean like public meeting, like joint public meeting of, of these bodies? I mean, is it possible to do a, I mean, I, I'm not actually sure this is where my, my, my newbiness in public uh, municipal work comes in. Like, can we, can we get all these boards together and have it not be a meeting? Like, is that even? No, it would have to uh, be. It's just, it, yeah, so in, in this sense, forum that I think is probably not, is is probably a misdirection in a way of a word. You know, I think just meeting is, is practically what it would need to be. I I think I understand that. So maybe, because I think the, the community forum, to me, that's a little more community focused and, and a little less formal, you know, <laughs> um, in, in my mind. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's, Maybe it's, it's the it's, internal. internal. That's the word that has to go. Oh. Can't be internal. It has to be public. I'm squeaking again. Maybe we just say hold an. <clears throat> what if we just say an meeting? That's that's that you think of a formal nonprofit. <clears throat>
Oh, wait, that's okay. Yeah, that makes sense. This is six. Okay, so hold some municipal boards. Is that okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Am I getting feedback again? Yeah. Okay, what about B? Hold annual community forum so that one we could keep forum because it would be more of a conversation to engage residents in the work of the trust relay current housing needs seek feedback and disseminate information about housing resources i would probably be inclined to change that to meeting also just because i don't see the point of having them be different they're kind of the same thing with different people involved in them so I'm wondering though if if it's engaging residents if you're wanting to you know we're seeking feedback if it, it it seems like it's more I I don't know I mean I guess that I'd have to look up the technical term of form <laughs> yeah you know, I don't know it's trying to kind of bring people in and <clears throat> meeting seems just more open ended if meeting could be a meeting could be a forum maybe a forum could be a meeting i don't know that in my head a forum is more formal a okay. forum has presenters and and probably it would but it i don't i don't know whatever i don't i don't care enough to make a thing about it but i would just let them be the same because they're pretty much the same idea of a thing they just have different intended <laughs> participants participants Do others think me? It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. Yeah, I mean, and really this is just like a meeting of the trust where the agenda items are all kind of pointed outwards toward the audience and there's an emphasis on audience uh, uh, a public public attendee participation, right? Is that is that a that's really kind of what we're talking about, right? Is there, anybody else see it differently than that? Then I yeah, I mean I think it's as as written here. I think it works. I guess he changed it to meeting, but that's fine too. You can publicize it with what. Okay, so, so 3C, review upcoming town events and identify opportunities for the trust to participate. That still seem fine. I, I'm not really opposed to this goal, but there's actually something else that I'd like to add and it might be more specific than this. Um, can I go ahead and pitch that? So, uh, you know, the thing that I'd like to either add or, or swap out for this, and, and, and it kind of could be within this, is something to the effect of um, identify and engage a targeted constituency to be determined potentially based on outcomes of the housing production plan. So what I mean by that is it could be sooner, but certainly by the, by, by the completion of the housing production plan, I would like to have clarity that we need to go um, uh, engage um, a, a higher number of um, graduate students at UMass or um, elders that are housing insecure or uh, young people looking to move out of their parents' home or some specific, and, and I'm hesitant to name that. The reason I, 
The reason I'm proposing to wait until after the housing production plan is complete is I suspect it might give us hints in like who we're, uh, who we're trying to serve. Um, and I'd like to, um, and, I, and I think that the utility of this is I think it's more productive to have a less generic sort of target constituency than like the public. Um, I, you know, I, I think it can it can give opportunities for deeper partnerships and um, and and maybe more effective advocacy. Um, you know, uh, for for projects that we're supporting. That's my pitch. <laughs> I don't. There's also value in, um, like the goal is trying to build more affordable housing. So uh, to continue to build that. So I think that there is some value in kind of the, the broader outreach. But then if if you're have if you I think I. I think the idea of focusing in on a particular group of people that are struggling with housing in Amherst and and working with them is is important is um, an interesting idea as well. Um, how might you phrase that, Greg? Um, yeah, I mean, so I think kind of I I would write maybe something to the effect of and before I before I say that I'll just caveat. Yes, agree, Shelley. I don't think we should be exclusively focused on constituency to be determined, but I think we, should, at least within like within the the big bucket of broader public, I'd like there to be one specific set of stakeholders that we can intentionally say we're going to spend twelve to eighteen months building relationships with with these folks and pulling them into trust meetings and you know, alerting them, you know, when there's decisions that affect their demographic, et cetera. So what I might say in, in, in the context of this document, um, identify and engage a targeted constituency to be identified by the housing production plan. Um, and uh, sorry, that's the most basic sentence and probably we should compound it with um and connect them to a, you know housing issues relevant to their needs or, or something like that but Does, then like, how does this meet the trust goals like, what is the so if we for example if if among our 200 units um we we, we decide uh we have a deficit of family housing, you know, then perhaps our targeted constituency is, you know, our um, parents who are renters, you know, uh, or, or, or cost burden renters. Um, if we decide we have a deep need for senior housing, um, then perhaps it's seniors, you know, who are, you know, affected by, um, you know, if it's singles, you know, maybe we're, um, you know, if, if we identify, a, you know, a, you know, a need for supportive housing, you know, maybe we're, you know, being intentional about contacting very low income people. Um, and, you know, and, and I guess, you know, these, you know, I, I, I'm thinking forward to sort of the public dialogue that happens down the line in, in, in different housing approval plans or, you know, but that that's kind of what, um, how I would see it relating to the, the production goals. But then what's the end result? Why are you doing that? Uh, I actually have a, a concern. Um, it already sometimes seems difficult. The outreach things that we do, <clears throat> when we bring together a bunch of people who don't have housing and what we can say is we can't really help you right now. And so I'm not sure what we're going to do with this constituency that we bring to us. What are we going to offer them? I don't, I, I'm really weary of creating expectations we can't meet. So that's just a concern. I think 
Yeah, I mean that that that's a legit concern, and and I guess I, I'm not. I, I, and remember, in, in this context, we're talking about education and public engagement. So we're not in this vein talking about we're going to meet these people's needs, right? I'm actually more talking about like as we educate the public and engage them, like we we, we within that phrase, the public, there will be one specific at least one specific subset of like mobilize these folks who are impacted right because i and 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 carol to respond to specifically to what you you said i think and i and you know i'm newer specifically to the trust work but you know i've been kind of more generally involved in this work um in you know different contexts what what often happens is we'll have um a, a, a mishmash of folks who are um you know, who are, uh, who are coming from different directions, all of whom experience, um, you know, cost burdens around housing or, you know, acute needs around housing. Um, and sometimes we'll be served by the same thing. Sometimes we'll be, we'll be served by a range of different things, depending on their specific circumstances. Um, and yes, and those moments do happen. You know, like when we do a forum, people are like, well, that's great. You have a plan, but what, what, can, you, what can you help me with now? And I think it's, imp and, and, and I think the answer to that is not setting up the engagement as how can we help you, but setting up the engagement as like, here's how the town can, can move forward and, and begin solving this problem for everybody. Um, so that's a sort of an outreach nuance that's important. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is if, if, if I, you know, what I'm kind of proposing here is a generic message of here's how the town can move forward to begin to solve some of these problems and how people can get involved. That sort of broad invitation, in my experience, is much less effective than a more targeted, like, you know, he, you know here's a constituency of people who are both impacted and have potential if organized and if if engaged coherently can often have a more uh, a, a, a more direct impact on outcomes um, rather than a, a more of a mishmash of folks. Um, I mean, it, 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 so your so point can help make them into like that's the end goal to bring them in, build a relationship and encourage them to advocate for our house. Advocate, participate. Um, yeah, um, you know, maybe join the trust, and you know, down the line, you know, like, um, uh, we know any any number of you know of of opportunities for engagement. But I, I guess what I, the, the, I, I, and I'm also sort of responding here to you know experience with, um, like. You know, I mean, I just think like an you know, like an advocate and an organizer. That's my background, you know, uh, for better and for worse. But like a phrase that we often use, like in communications, is like there's no such thing as the general public, right? Like if you have a communication plan aimed at the general public, you have a bad communication plan. Um, uh, if you have a communication plan aimed at subsets and, and with with different messages for different people and different um, uh, priorities for different people that might be more relevant to them, that's what tends to generate. Um, traction. Um, and so I'm trying to kind of drill through this sort of like engage the public thing, which to me is not that useful. And, and to name, uh, I, I, I'm sort of proposing that we bookmark because I'm, I'm hesitant to name it now because I think we're about to do a bunch of research, which will inform like what that constituency should be. But let's just for, for conversation's sake, we said it's elders, you know, uh, you know, it's low income elders, um, you know, or, you know, or seniors or whatever, whatever parlance you want to use. Um, then suddenly the, you know, it, it organizes, you know, the work plans at the staff level, it gives, um, uh, a more concrete, um, uh, seed for existing partners to, uh, to think about, you know, so if, if I say to the trust members right now, you know, Hey, go think about people in general public that we can bring to our next meeting. Um, I'm not going to get much of a response, you know, on the whole, if I say go think about you know um, you know twenty five year olds you know who are in that about to lose health insurance and still in, in their parents' house like we'll get some of those folks you know I mean I think so it's it's kind of like giving people a specific thing to think about than a, a vague thing to think about.
and I think those folks like, and I, and I, I guess it's basically like uh, the, the idea of engaging the general public is it tends to fall flat in, in my experience, unless you have a specific, specific subsets within that. I'd love to hear what Rob thinks. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, so this, this is making me think of, um, People like Ashley Jensen, who used to be on the trust, and, and Grover, who are, who are representing sort of a specific constituency that, that you know, that might identify, uh, you know, as not being not not currently participating in the in, in the work of the trust. Um, and so, I, I think what Greg is saying is, let's identify someone who, who you know who isn't participating like we like they sh should be or could be. And and find some way to bring them in. So I, I like the idea. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting to hear the right words, but but I but I, I in general I support the idea that Greg is. Yeah. And this is not at all to say if, if we have a plan to engage, you know, young professionals, you know, and we get uh, you know uh, a, a very enthusiastic, you know, set of you know of middle aged parents or you know or empty nesters or, or whatever. That we're gonna we're gonna not welcome them into the work or you know or, or offer them the information they want. It's more to say as a as a planning intention. I think it's better to have you know to say hey let's go um, you know let's let's go speak to this specific set of folks with a specific message um, and, and hope that they respond rather than a general one. So we could write it where it's each year, identify different types of so you kind of spend a few years um, trying to different groups around the work of the tribe, how the community, how people can be involved. I I think though that to some of Greg's point, perhaps that you're not going to get people to come to your trust meetings just to, it's unlikely just to like see what you're about. It's more that you need to go out. And so it's, it's also why reviewing town events, like what are things that you could participate in to bring the message out and the annual kind of community meeting is a special thing. It's not your monthly meetings, expecting people to show up to your monthly meetings. That's probably really unlikely. And then the municipal boards, this engaging municipal boards, like it's, it, it is trying to meet people where they are already instead of expecting people to come to your trust meeting. So, you know, definitely, yes. So, um, okay, let's see if we can figure something out here. Maybe targeted constituencies. Based on housing production plan and other research. I mean, you know, and had this been in place perhaps, you know, uh, a year ago, say, you know, when we all just got a presentation, um, I think before Shelly joined us last week about the community bill or the community, uh, I'm forgetting the funding stream for Amherst Community Homes, um, uh, the Commonwealth Builder Project, which is kind of informally, like, you know, it's aimed at, you know, at first generation um uh, homeowners, you know, in, in, including, you know, you know, people of color and traditionally marginalized communities. Um, we could have taken that constituency and said, Hey, you know what, like, we know that we funded this project. And so we're going to make sure that we, um, you know, communicate to the, tar the constituency that this project is targeted at, you know, in, you know, 20, you know, in, perhaps in parallel to 
the marketing plan that uh, that Valley's already doing, you know, but that might be an example, you know, um, uh, you know, we're going to have, um, and these might not, you know, the constituencies might be, might be defined broadly. It might be, it could be, it could be people of color, you know, we could see that, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be an age or a profession or anything, but, um, I mean, you know, we're going to have this VFW project, right. Which we hope is going to serve, um, very low income people, you know, maybe, you know, those folks we should be talking to directly, you know, um, so I'm just thinking, yeah. So, I, and I think, you know, what, what the strategic opportunities are, what the data say, you know, um, what our group isn't excited about, you know, I mean, I think all that can inform it, but I'm just, I guess my hope is to make sure we have a more specific hook than just the general public. Not to exclude anybody, but to sort of like. Why does it have to be a different constituency each year? What if the same one seems relevant to different years? To just spend a few years building a relationship with just one group of people? I guess if the idea is to try to in different groups, that to spend three years on one. Um, maybe as as effective as trying to reach different groups, but you could just focus on one over three years. Oh, I, I don't know. Many things take more than a year, even to do. So oh, sure. having a different one every year seems kind. Of, I, I don't know. Whatever. Okay. I mean, we, you could, we could just take away the the term "different" and. And in the sort of implementation plan of this, assume there's going to be a check-in annually, and then folks can say, "Yes, let's stay with this group," or "Okay, now we did we we started some great relationships over here. Let's keep working those into the next step, and then focus on this other set of folks." You know, whatever. Yeah, I just like to not have it that it must be a different one every year for five years. That's five different groups. Maybe that's cool. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Identify and engage is harder constituency group annually. Um, so if we said annually, that would say it could be different or it could be the same. Or we could just leave it at identify and engage a target group and just leave it like that. Sure. There's nothing that says you can't say a second one. Just start with that. And I'm trying to decide how to phrase what we're going to do with them. I mean, I think, I don't know that we have to say that here, right? In the same way that we don't have to, yeah, to build relationships um, and, Um, and community awareness of housing concerns. What you, well, you could say to, to build relationships, participation, and awareness. I kind of think we said it by saying identify and engage, but if you want to make it more stuff, and, and, okay. And, and for for example, here, right? Like you know, and I, I know I'm, I'm thank thank you all for bearing with me here on this idea, but I'm just you know, so you know, we, we had, you know, identify, you know, upcoming town events and opportunities for, for trust to participate. Right. Um, so that's tabling, you know, at community events or whatever, that's, um, you know, that's, you know, making sure we're on an agenda or, you know, you know, it's sort of, you know, kind of generic public facing stuff, you know, and I think ha if we had a specific constituency, you know, where we said, Hey, we definitely want to prioritize this folks in 2026, this set of folks in 2026, that in turn lets like people at the staff level, for example, say, Hey, like out of these 10 events, you know, with my 
five hours I have this month for public outreach, you know, these three events are most likely to connect me with these people. You know, it, it, it organizes the, and helps make, and helps prioritize, you know? Um, and I think, and it could vary. Sometimes it could be for specifically trying to get, you know, connect people to services and opportunities. Sometimes it might be they're unrepresented in public dialogue. Um, you know, sometimes it might be, um, you know, they're, uh, you know, they have, you know, maybe they're homeowners, you know, who are candidates to build accessory dwelling units. I don't know, you know, like, but I think um, this kind of a habit where we identify a class of people, some set of people, I think will be usefully focusing in, in, in the outreach work. So why did we take engage out of there at the beginning and just make it identify instead of identify and engage? Because you suggested it was redundant. What? You suggested it was redundant to then add like you Oh, so you took the engage took out and engage left out. the other stuff. I see. I would have left the other stuff out, but okay, got it. <laughs> engage doesn't really say as much. So I think saying okay. All right. <laughs> insight into what you mean. Okay, do folks feel okay to present that D to the full board? So E, I think is, for me, is the trickiest one. It's the inclusionary zoning, going back to that. And uh, I personally don't see this as education or public engagement, <clears throat> uh, but it was suggested to possibly put this in this goal. So part of me wonders if we just drop it all together, but wanted to put it out there, collaborate with the permitting board in reviewing IZ developments, particularly those being considered for an in lieu of payment to provide affordable housing insight. To, to me, this, um, this means being a, a normal and expected part of the planning board's consideration of, yep. of a project that involves inclusionary zoning. So, so right now, or at least when I was on the planning board, um, the planning board automatically got a report from the design review board. It automatically got a report from um, from the housing from the struggle district. You know when it was relevant. Um, I don't feel like we automatically are asked for our input by the planning board for uh, IZ projects, and and so so to me, this goal is about making the planning board automatically call on us for for input and you know we might not give any input but but at least we have a chance to say something and so that that you know that that i think that builds um the profile of the of the housing trust um it's it, it you know weaves the different boards together to work towards the common goal uh, of increasing housing. You know, it just it just makes us part of, part of the ecosystem better. Yeah. So, do you see it though as a strategy under education and public engagement, or what I'm kind of wondering is, is it just something that's more administrative that the trust should be working on, kind of more close with the planning board and maybe key staff? Could this be seen as adversarial by anyone on the planning board that the trust is putting it out there? I, I don't know the, cult, the culture or the politics there. Yeah, I, I feel like it's similar to um, to, the, to, our, to the goal of, of, you know, making the CPA committee give us 15%. That's also sort of adversarial. Um, mm -hmm. But but yeah, I think you're right that, that it's possibly more, uh, a little more um, not as clear uh, a goal for the group, but, but maybe uh, something that, that the group asks 
um, town staff to to make happen or something. Yeah. So maybe it does need to be a goal, um, but but it might be something that the trust itself could discuss and ask Greg or, or ask Nate to to at least put on the internal planning department's um, radar. Yeah, I kind of agree. It doesn't really seem like education and public engagement, but it does seem important. And it's some way to convey somewhere where you can say, <laughs> seek a planning board agreement to request trust commentary whenever there is such a project. I don't know where you put that. I don't really want to put a goal just for this. It doesn't really seem like a good step. I mean, I I think it, it if you know it to, if it stays right, you know, we could just take it away. But it, it if it does stay, I think it does fit under education and public engagement. I mean, because the most basic. I mean, I think we said, going back a few months ago now, but I think we said that our development number, we would include inclusionary development if we had advocated for it. Does that ring a bell? I, I think that's what we'd said, you know, so within that 200 would be things the trust had funded, advocated for, helped facilitate, you know, did a land deal for, you know, defined broadly. The most basic version to me of 3E would be trust members, you know, having a plan to go and, you know, possibly lobby on behalf if the trust liked it, you know, of, you know, of a, a project with inclusionary zoning, even just as offering public comment in a, a planning board hearing, you know, and to me that, I, you know, that that's you know, that's a form of education. I mean, you're talking to the planning board, you're educating them. You're also educating other people who are absorbing that planning meeting. Um, but I think it's, that that's kind of how I understood this. And I, and I actually think the, I can't remember if we have anything regarding in lieu and in, in the goal above at this point, if we, took, if we subtracted all of it and moved it down. Um, but I think, you know, in lieu almost complicates it here, you know, because because of what I just said, it's, it's really just about, you know, advocating for stuff within our objectives. So you're saying take a uh, phrase uh, in lieu of and just say that the trust will work for giving, providing housing and private insight. Yeah. Sorry, and I, I have to step away for a few moments here to grab a kid. <laughs> Be right back. Right. Yeah, I don't like I don't like having us somehow look like we're advocating for in lieu of. It feels like we're just trying to. It, it mixes our goals in a way that is God is confusing to me. I actually thought that what Greg was just talking about was what I saw happening and review upcoming town events, and I would say, and meetings and identify opportunities for the trust to participate. That should in, somehow be able to include planning board meeting. That's an event, or maybe it's not an event, but anyway, I saw us staying on top of what's going on and showing up when we needed to as part of whatever that letter is there, C. It doesn't mean we can't have an E, but. I think that it's important enough that the permitting board, that it should be called out from any other. Kind of okay, that's board. fine. But I, I think that to, taking out the in lieu of reference, particularly because it's a little bit tricky of looking like it's trying to fund the trust versus getting affordable units. I, that makes sense to me to, to take out that language. So I think I'm just going to take it out and see what it, how it feels. That, I like that better. Yeah, so I think if it's that, then it is to provide affordable housing insight, then that does, I can hear Greg's, I can see Greg's point of that it's a part of education with the planning board. What, what do you think about that, Rob? 
That works okay. Okay, Greg, so what if we just, what if we leave it like this? I like it. So it, it does follow under education. We take out the in lieu of, which kind of complicates the messaging. But really elevates the need to be building that relationship with the permitting the permitting board. Okay. So how about these Great. five? Oh, board. Is it a That's good. We're ready to go. I think um, I know we're trying to keep it simple, but I'd like to uh, leave the option open in D. What if we just uh, under uh, under D next to group, we just put a parentheses S, just in case you know three years from now we said you know what this group is good and ready to go. We need a new set of folks to prioritize you know, leaves us that option. Technically, that means that targeted is not quite correct. Quite correct. Or you should identify, take away A, maybe. That's not E correct. Either. Well, I mean, targeted groups, I guess that's not going to happen. Identified targeted consistency group. That works, right? I mean, are, you, are you saying grammatically it's problematic or, or conceptually? Um, well, it, you need a uh, for group, but you don't need a uh, for group. Oh, okay. <laughs> or, or, yeah, so, you know, how the, the, the point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. We can see what the full board, how the full board responds anyway. Okay, so I will keep these two highlighted just to help them know how the ones that they we talked about were modified for Greg to send out. And then if you send out these, so I will send this to all of you and include um, Erica. So you have this latest version six, still fun of version six. And your meeting will be probably the second Thursday in August. Are you meeting in August? Yeah. And it is Carol, how long are you facilitating it? When does um that will be his first meeting? Oh, okay. August 8th. So <clears throat> I got it. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great. It's really coming together. Yeah. Okay, so I'll send this over to you right now and then put in my calendar on Twitter. Uh, right. And so I can just include this in the, the packet, right? I don't need to send it out. Or would the folks would folks prefer I sent it out? Okay. It can be in the packet. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. You too. Take care. May it get cool tonight. <laughs> yes. Open your windows. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All right. Take, take care, Carol. Thanks, Shelley.